Hello guys, what's up? It's Vivs here from SlideNerd. In this video, we're gonna talk about the model view controller in iOS. Before I start, there are two things that I would like to point out. One, if you go to Google and type SlideNerd Udemy, you will find all our courses right in the first link where we're gonna add stuff on how to make apps for Android, iOS, PhoneGap, Titanium, Tizen, and all the other platforms out there. Second, if you go to my channel slide nerd, if you go to playlist, you will find this video along with the rest of the other videos right here in the iOS Swift tutorial for beginners playlist. So be sure to check these two things out. Let's get back to our topic. So here is a nice diagram which has two parts on the left side. iOS is doing everything on the right side. Your code is going to do something. For starters, we have the app icon. The user is going to click on that icon. The main is going to be called. The UI application main method is called. The UI file is loaded. Initialization happens. And then immediately, your app delegate.swift file is going to have the application build finished launching with options method being called over here. Then you have some other methods that are going to run where your UI state is going to be managed for you. Ultimately, when your app is launched, you have the application did finish launching with options that is called to indicate that yes the application has launched now here's the difference will finish launching with options is called just before launching your app and did finish is called just after launching your app then your app is in the running state at which point ios is going to activate the app and your application did become active method is called over here finally you handle events like button clicks or image taps or swipes and other gestures and those are going to be processed by your event loop and ultimately the user is going to switch to a different app when the user ultimately moves away from your app you have the state called background which is this blue box that you see here in the background state the user is not looking at your app immediately the first thing that happens is the application did enter background method is called in this method you can do whatever you want when your application enters the background for example it could be simply saving two instance variables that may contain the username and password or it can be something more sophisticated like writing to a file or checking cache or something like that now there is a special mode in which your app can run in the background if that mode is present in that case you're going to run the app in the background and you're going to exit after the running is complete otherwise your app is going to be suspended after some time by ios and your app enters the sleep mode now remember when does this suspension happen all that is pretty much controlled by ios now let's take a look at the anatomy of an app three parts model controller and view let's take a look at the first one model is nothing but the data that your app represents if you're making a calculator it's going to be two numbers methods like add subtract multiply divide percentage if you're trying to make a spaceship game, it's going to have a class called spaceship where you do something like tracking the position of the object on the screen. If you're making a take notes app, it's going to be an array of your notes and methods to add and remove notes. So you can understand what a model basically does, but it doesn't have to be a simple class. It can be core data or it can be realm.io, which we'll be talking, talking about as we go further in the series. It can be SQLite. It can be a class representing some data from your Dropbox or parse.com. Sky is the limit on what can be the model because as iOS evolves, more and more platforms are being integrated. Cloud storage is easily possible now with two lines of code and all that can be represented by your model class if you want. So model is pr pretty much a very broad topic for discussion let's take a look at the next item that would be the view controller now view controller manages the presentation on screen here is the simplest statement a view controller in simplest words is a screen so like it says a view controller manages a single view and a collection of sub views now sub views are simply views within views and if you talk about what is a view a view is nothing but a rectangle on the screen that the user can see touch do stuff with so whenever a view controller is presented the view controller is gonna make its views visible and install them in the apps window and the class that represents a view controller in iOS would be the UI view controller which acts as the base class for all the other types of fancy view controllers that iOS has and we will be talking about those fancy ones as well as we go through the series now let's try to understand the third item which would be view which has something called a UI window. Let's take a look at this UI window. 
Here is a simple app that shows an image on the screen with the help of the UI image view. Now on the user's end, they're just going to see the image, but this is what it actually looks like on the left hand side. You have layers at the bottom level. You have something called the UI window and on top of it, you have the UI view, which is a rectangular area capable of displaying something and letting the user interact with it. On top of the UI view, you have the UI image view that takes up the full available screen space. Now, the UI image view is a widget that can display this palm tree image that you see in the diagram. Now, there's a button here called transition, which is again on top of something called the UI toolbar. And as you can see, this is how things are broken layer wise and item wise in iOS. So let's take a look at what the UI window does. The UI window coordinates items on the screen like we saw in that diagram over there. Most apps only have one UI window that presents the main content. Now some of them may have an additional window when you're displaying or using an external screen. Now external screen is basically some other device connected with your iOS on which you're going to see the screen of your iOS. To change the content of an app, use the view controller and never ever tamper with the UI window because it is supposed to be managed by the system, not by you. Windows also work with your UI application object to deliver events to the views and view controllers out there. Now let's take a look at the view and the UI objects on the screen. View in the simplest words is a rectangular area on the screen which is going to draw something and the user can interact with it with the help of events. There's a class from the UI view class out there. Now controls are the widgets that you'll be using like buttons, text fields, toggle switches, they are all derived from the view. In other words, in the words of programming language, they all inherit or extend from the view. So all these items are a part of something called a UI kit framework and we can use these widgets in our apps. To create custom views, you would subclass the UI view and then create the items that you're interested in. So this is what a view looks like. You have a nice text view here that displays paragraph. As you can notice, it's nothing but a rectangular area on the screen. But in this case, it is specialized because it is capable of displaying a paragraph. We add this in the storyboard file. We can connect this with code and edit this paragraph and do some validation with it. So that roughly covers the model view controller. And we'll be taking a look at it in more detail as we go further. In the meantime, go to Google, type slider on Udemy and take a look at our courses out there. You can check our social accounts on Slidenote Twitter and Slidenote Facebook and all the code is out there if you type Slidenote GitHub on Google. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.